do have to be mindful about where the weight will land and maybe put a cup there or something. Replace that weight with anything. In this case, we're gonna make it heavier and use it to pull on stuff, namely levers. Also a rolling or sliding object, in this case, a rolling platform. High in one simple motion, sound familiar? Or a lever. That release something is also a very common usage in that object in place until the domino falls over. And make one side of the lever much longer than the other can be used to restore an object to its original. You use a pusher in the perpendicular to the rolling path of the ball. You've got the line of dominoes that falls over as it falls into position. The ball's own momentum push it over the speed bump when the track comes to a stop. Behind the speed bump at the top of the track, but when it rolls over it again, the ball is able to roll over the speed bump on its way. This is very basic, almost what kind of barriers you add. So here are some examples forms of the end of track stopper that you might need with different balls on different tracks. In solution here is to add a barrier behind the marble, that, but usually by just adding a small barrier through, we can be sure it's going in a straight line. And the rolling platform end up in the right place. The first is creating a vertical pulley system and if we add a magnet to the rotating track and to the track that it's supposed to line up with, we can get a ball dropper here. We need a way to hold the cup in this kind of magnetic connection is perfect for addressing this problem too. Magnet on the end of the ruler and on the end of this lever used before in a machine to solve this exact problem. Another is a trick that uses a bunch of marbles. And if you don't think ahead, this is a mis- Of course, make a track pendulum in any number of ways because obviously anything that hits the lever would have to over- would look like this. In this case, version using the joint method as well. String, but you can't really push a string into the hole, is holding the ball lift in place. And of course, when a lever is remuffin, is an offset lever leading directly into a easy to release a ball directly using an off lift a track from beneath. You can imagine how this wouldn't really occur, and as it continues on its path, it rotates so that when the second ball enters, it boggles indefinitely. And here's an example of what that looks like. You can see that if you can see the first ball passes through, and the second ball is able to knock the domino. I have made a lever that only pushes the domino off the table on the fourth ball. Ball kicker, where the ball hits the bottom of the lever, and the balance swing swings the base of the balance swing, causing it to swing around and hit another ball directly. In this example, releasing a ball on a track somewhere. You meet that's heavy enough to lift the track by itself. All we need is a lever that's heavy enough. Ball hits the end of the lever, it nudges it out of place. You can even use the overbalanced lever in the same way as the white rod in it, and the white rod, the connects rod lock is able to hold it back no problem. And that's where the string redirectors come in, because if you're careful about how you route each of the string paths, you can set it up in such a way that none of the strings ever touch. Example where I had the string redirector at the edge of the table, redirector back in, it works again. Elevated lever is by using a module like a lever, you will have to add an extra pulley point to make it rotational example of how you can use one to convert a downward force to say a falling domino or a weight in the table and the top of the domino. When the domino gets knocked off the table, it doesn't just fall directly, it falls off the table. You can see that it pulls the string taut in between, but a string pusher is just right. A string with one endpoint attached to a block and one endpoint attached to, and that's where the string attractor comes in, particularly the property that I mentioned, place as it rides along with the moving platform until it reaches an example of what that might look like. You can see that the object that gets pulled by the string is an example where the object that moves and the object that gets pulled by the string are. You can see that by wrapping the string around the connects wheel underneath the gear, we can achieve is mounted on a rolling platform and the string unwraps from the wheel as the platform. You can see that the fidget spinner is able to continue rolling platform where a string pulls it to one side, and once it reaches that side, it automatically does how you solve the motor issue. Because you can still use the string to pull an object into place, but once the object is in place, we'll get a classic example of how to use a falling support. With, as we've seen, the auto tilt works just fine with a ping pong ball, but the disconnecting lever. And here's what it looks like. A lighter ball rolls across the track, and then a heavier ball rolls across the track, and is a bit different, where the lighter ball actually gets redirected to the lower path, and the heavier ball stays on. Finally, the compression rod. Here's how you can use the concentrating lever with a rolling ball input. The classic, and probably my favorite, string input. So here's an example of a trick that uses a frictional lever. You can see the track falls down onto the lever and rotates, allowing the track to fall further. And it will rotate the lever when it enters the cup. It doesn't matter how much the cup is swinging, and it's impossible for the cup to just go around. Well, 
It's not the easiest thing in the world to make, but here's an example of a very simple and efficient way that you can accomplish. So here's an example of what that might look like. We've got a rolling platform here connected to a piston that will continuously oscillate back and forth along these rails. And the one directional lever, like the first ball rolls into the tube, but then gets held inside. So the but then the second ball just rolls straight through and doesn't stop at all. Eight into a discarded weight. It's the board when it tilts to the left side. Two is attach the weight to the disc only for the time that it's traveling downwards, giving the disc, and look at what a difference it makes. Silky smooth motion, very consistent speed, and no chance of made a system where the object can be moved when limited weight pull does. You can see this is a much more peaceful, a dual limited weight pull. And this works per Here's the seesaw trick with the shifting weight mechanism. The wooden ball isn't able to tilt the track, but the billiard ball is. And then, repeat. Now, when the domino falls onto the right side of the ball lift, it pushes that side down slightly, causing the shifting. Very simple, automatically resetting ball dropper trick. And here's what that looks like. This is the intermittent weight pull.